Hey y'all, so we hear that this diet, say the carnivorous diet, or we hear one day that the keto diet, or we hear that the vegan diet is best. Well, what diet is really best? I don't really know. I mean, I think we need to test to see what different foods and macronutrient profiles and feeding patterns and fasting patterns, how those affect our physiology. So today we're gonna talk about testing your epigenetic age using the MyDNH test. So I've never done this. We're gonna walk through this and I'll share with you the results when I get them back. But a little kind of history and context on this. Steve Horvath has created this so-called epigenetic clock, the Horvath clock, that really predicts your epigenetic age. So I'm 37 years old and what we want to kind of figure out with a test like this is does my chronological age pair up nicely with my biological age? And we don't yet know that. Uh, people can kind of like look at you and see, oh, that he might be in his 40s or no, maybe he's mid 30s. You know, what if he's in his 50s or she? Um, well, I mean, those are somewhat subjective, but what this test is going to do is look at characteristic epigenetic imprints and that will give uh, you and, and me, uh, presumably if you decide to do a test like this, a, a better insight into how your lifestyle, diet, and exercise program and stress management program, how that's influencing your biology and epigenetics. I'm Mike Mutzel and you are tuning in to High Intensity Health. I'm so excited that you're here. If at any point you like this content, you definitely wanna hit that like button and be sure to subscribe so that you get updated when we launch new videos like this, interviews with experts and more. So the easiest way to talk about what epigenetics is, is to talk about software updates on your phone. Okay, so this is an iPhone. I think it's iPhone X, okay? Now, the hardware is not necessarily changing on this phone, but Apple is always making software updates, which affect the functionality of this phone. So again, it's kind of like the genes aren't changing, but these software updates are changing how the genes, i.e. the hardware, are affecting the user interface, which is how I use the phone. So epigenetics can be likened to software. Your gen genome can be likened to the hardware. So it's crazy to think about, but your, the cells that comprise your eye are the exact same cells that comprise my fingernails or your fingernails. The cells that comprise your liver have the exact same DNA as the cells that comprise your knees, uh, your skin, right? So how does it happen? How does every single cell in the human body have the same blueprint or genetic material, yet a different phenotypic expression, like the eyes or the nose or the shape of the lips. That's thanks to the epigenome. So the epigenome influences genetic expression. Your diet, your thoughts, your lifestyle, your spirituality, right? Your stress management, exercise, all these things, environmental toxin burden, all these things influence your epigenome, which influences the way in which your genes are expressed. I want to thank one of my mentors, Jeff Bland, for indelibly inking this concept into my mind. Way back, I used to listen to his functional medicine updates when I was riding my bike in Colorado back in 2006, 2007. He's been talking about this for a very long time. And what's unique about epigenetics, and I don't want to get too far off uh, chronological versus bio biological age testing here, but I do want you to understand is epigenetics is inherited through different, like, different generations, right? So what my grandfather was exposed to from a toxin level, from a stress level, whether he was diabetic or obese, can affect me, and that can affect you as well. And so this is very important for us to understand this and to make the appropriate lifestyle changes, especially if we're thinking about having children, because the foods that we eat, even as fathers, guys, you know, and gals that, that are trying to you know, procreate with men, you need to understand this. You know, there's a lot of onus placed on making lifestyle changes for women. Like women have a lot of responsibility uh, and perceived you know, responsibility for the outcome of, and the health of the baby, but there's a lot of paternal epigenetic influences. So guys, if you're smoking, if you're drinking, if you're eating pizza and hot dogs and chips, you're gonna influence the health in a negative way of your child. And so uh, things like avoiding microplastics from plastic bottles, BPA, uh, diesel fume exhaust, car exhaust, all of these things influence what are controlling your genes and they're heritable uh, just like genes are so anyway that's what the epigenome is liken your epigenome to software liken your genes to the hardware the hardware doesn't necessarily change unless you get a mutation like you're exposed to x-rays for example or you're exposed to radiation of some sort so let's go through this i'm very curious you know i've been fasting now for over three years i've been doing keto for five years you know, people say the ketogenic diet is, is terrible. Uh, you know, eating meat's gonna you know, cause heart disease and cancer. So I'm just so curious to see how my epigenetic age correlates with my chronological age. So we're gonna open up the MyDNA kit and, and just full disclosure, 
I paid full retail for this. I'm not being paid for this. Um, I'm going to work with the company to get you a promo code, but I don't have that solidified yet, but um, I might. So be sure to check the YouTube description because I'm going to email them and let them know that I'm doing this. Okay. So when you get the kit, here's what it looks like. You go to mydnh.com forward slash activate and Ooh, we have a lot of blood that needs to be pricked here, <laughs> which is going to be uh, quite interesting. Um, so we need to fill up this tube here with blood. All right, that's a lot of damn blood. All right, so here we go. These are the lancets that are gonna prick my skin and presumably what I do is I pipette the blood from there from my finger into this tube and I need to fill it up a certain uh, amount. So what I'm gonna do before I get too excited is I should probably read the instructions. Okay. Squeeze a punctured finger to help blood flow. Place the tip of the capillary tube, blah, 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 to collect blood until the capillary tube is full. Okay, so we just have to fill this capillary tube once. All right, just to make life easy for Sam over there. I'm gonna spread everything that way. So basically what I need to do, friends, is get enough blood to fill up this tube. It's, it's a lot, but it's not that much. So first things first, when you're drawing a lot of blood like that, is you wanna clean with a little alcohol here. So whatever, you know, the funny thing is since we're talking about this stuff, like, like me touching my phone and then doing something like this, and we have another video on testing your ketones. There's, there's been some tests on the bacteria that's on a phone. And uh, there's a lot, of, a lot of bugs on phones. I'm not necessarily a, a, bub, a bug phobic person, but I do think when you're pricking your fingers, you gotta be a little bit more diligent about that. So you should definitely use alcohol swabs. And another little interesting fact, since we're rolling here, I travel a lot and in airports, ladies, you may not want to know this, but I see so many guys go to the bathroom in airports and walk out without washing their hands. It's pretty gross. Um, so guys, wash your damn hands, man. So um, what we're going to do here is they have a little Band-Aid. Okay, so with this Lancet, I think what you do is you just pull this guy out and then just press on your finger. This one hurts. I remember the docs gave me, gave me this one when I was a kid and I did not like it. Since I pricked my finger so many times. Can you see it going in? That's cool. Look at that. That's some red blood. Since we have time, we can talk about it uh, all. If you do a carnivorous diet and you're a male or a postmenopausal female, I highly suggest donating blood uh, at least once or twice a year. Okay. All right. So um, what we do is place the filled capillary tube. So it's full, okay. So there's some sort of solution in here. Oh wow, so it's just dripping in, shoot. Oh, I see, so it's like a little syringe. Oh, this thing's cool. So look, what you do is you press down on this purple thing and the blood is coming out. All right. So all things considered, friends, it wasn't that painful. Okay, so then what I'm going to do is screw this like this, screw the red cap securely, and flick it five times um, to mix a sample with the preserving agent. Okay, so there's a preserving agent in here. So you can see this, this thing is pretty stout from a puncture standpoint. Um, all right, I might need to use a Band-Aid. Okay. So then what you do is you put this back in the test kit and there is some things I need to write on there. So I'll write that later. I think my initials, date of birth, something along those lines. <sighs> so what I'm going to do is send that off and then I'll report back to you all about how my chronological age ties up with my epigenetic age. And that will, you know, enable me and you presumably, if you decide to do this, to decide if the diet and the lifestyle and the feeding and fasting patterns that you adhere to if they're affecting your longevity, if they're affecting your biology, and if they're not, you should make some choices there to decide where to go from there. So one thing that I've been doing in the last year and a half that I think has would probably influence this in a favorable manner is I've really compressed my feeding pattern. I'm doing at most two meals a day in a smaller window. Um, I don't eat at all on Monday, so I call it Metabolic Monday, which I'll link to other videos. So I've been doing a, a, a decent amount of things. I also take 50 milligrams of DHA every single morning, which has really influenced my circadian rhythm. 
Uh, we eat a lot of you know food made from scratch. You know we don't out, go out and eat fast food. I travel less. Um, and the other thing I've been doing recently is taking a gram of fermented trans resveratrol in the evening uh, with a little bit of fat. So I'm just curious to see if all these things are influencing you know my biological age. Uh, and I'll report back to you. And in a future video, we're going to talk about the interventional clinical trial that Steve Horvath did, and where he showed that a combination of human growth hormone. DHEA and metformin was able to reverse the epigenetic age by about two years compared to controls. And even after they stopped this six month intervention, what they showed is there was a persistence there in terms of the reversal of the epigenetic age. So I'll link that below. I really appreciate you all tuning in. If, and if you decide to use the MyDNA, uh, I would love to know like how your biological age coincides with your chronological age. So um, thanks so much for tuning into this video. We'll catch you on a future one down the road.